The Lincoln was built for humanity and equality. It was a place where people could thoroughly enjoy the arts. And so that has transcended to where the Lincoln is today. This theater was originally built in 1928. The driving force was segregation didn't allow African Americans to frequent the downtown theaters. And when they did, they had to enter from the balcony entrances and only be seated in those areas. When we think about 1928, when it opened its doors to the public, uh, what was the context under which it opened? It opened within a context of, of segregation, of uh, a culture built around uh, African Americans that said they're less than other people. They didn't have the same rights and they weren't afforded the same opportunities. A number of Masons, uh, professionals, um, and also trade workers came together and, and decided to build uh, the Lincoln. It was a space in a Mecca where African Americans and also people of non-color could come without barriers to support and enjoy the richness of the arts. It wouldn't have been uncommon to see some national figures, uh, especially jazz artists. You can look at Central Ohio and, and the Lincoln Theater specifically as a hub for uh, African American jazz. So the likes of James Brown, Etta James, Miles Davis, Cab Calloway, Count Basie, all had their time here. This part of the city, uh, it was just bustling with just performers and, and artists. One of the things that stands out for me, you often hear Sammy Davis Jr.'s name. Um, and I believe one of his first performances, if not his first performance, was here at the Lincoln Theater. Longstreet, of where the uh, building is situated, was called the Million Dollar Mile because the dollar just abundantly rotated throughout the community up and down Longstreet and Mount Vernon Avenues. The district was known as the place to be, to see, and to be seen. It only took a few years after they put in the highway that the whole entire community was left very dormant and desolate. And this happened all over the country. Those neighborhoods that, you know, were demolished in a sense to build the roads are usually low income, often African American. But it's also important to note that segregation, at least um, de jure segregation, had ended and you know African Americans were free to patronize whatever venues, whatever locales they wanted at that point and the Lincoln Theater just fell out of use. Which is interesting when you look at how great of a win it was to you know have the Civil Rights Act passed yet one of the unintended consequences was that self-reliance that African Americans had held on to for so long fell, you know, to the wayside as a consequence. It survived and it rebounded, it overcame. The need to honor those who have gone before us is in this place. The Lincoln Theater was saved because the, the community saw the need for this, this cultural icon here to uh, continue to exist, continue to help um, shed light on, on a story that started to fade, um, to pass on that story to the generations of people who may not have understood how important the Lincoln Theater was. I would describe the Lincoln today as a beacon of hope. It was the hope that it would be a place where segregation wasn't prevalent for the people who share the same love of the arts, who have commonality in their lives, can come here and sit side by side and to witness the final performance and to scream bravo. You know, it just feels good to do that. The cultural heritage that it, it symbolizes shows the younger generations especially that this is what can be done. 
it's just amazing the talent that was nurtured here. And I think that's why the Lincoln Theater is so important today because it continues that legacy of nurturing and building that talent that's already here, that already exists in this area.